What's going on? Welcome to GC365. I'm pumped that you're with us. I'm Pastor Kyler. I'm the associate pastor at the Woodenville campus. This is Mike. He is the What's second second best ping pong player on Wood on Gold Creek staff. Which, believe it or not, Brian, if you're watching, that means I'm better than you. <laughs> Although I've never beat you. But <laughs> yeah, he, I was gonna say who he actually straight won. Up cheats. He does cheat. Uh, this I His want service. This, can we? This, edit this a is on clip into the, the, the GC365. <laughs> we actually we have like video evidence of this and I, I do want to make sure that this is on record brian serves illegally yes so when he, he plays throws ping. the ball to his paddle well he's left-handed which is already a strike yeah. against him yeah um and he throws it to his paddle which is not legal not legal i still beat him regardless i just blame it on him cheating it's his time. it's his illegal serve that's that's why mike's the second best uh and that's yes, why he's ahead of brian, i play so. i play fairly by the rules yeah fairly by the rules so well I, i'm glad you guys are with us day 288 let's go uh this is an interesting passage we're talking about jeremiah mm -hmm. and here's here's the big question i have from today because god and with all the prophets god's telling them hey listen go tell these people this mm -hmm. and this was an instance where people didn't want to listen to him people yep. were about to kill him because of yep, yep, yep. what he said but here's the question that i, that I have from all of it, it it's when do you know if God is telling you to do something? Mm. Yeah. What mm -hmm. about what about when like you're thinking and, and you're like one day you're like, I think the Lord is telling me to get a cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like that's not from the that's Lord. That's clearly, ever. I mean, it's so it's so clearly not from God, right? But <laughs> all the cat people are I'll, I'll, sorry. But I don't hate not, cats. No, me either. But I just why? Why? Yeah, I don't get it either. But like, so it's like clearly. So I mean, what do you think? What's the line? Like, how do you know how many cats are too many cats? Yeah, <laughs> one. But <laughs> but like, so God. I mean, God told these different prophets to do wild stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like super wild stuff. And with Jeremiah too, he's like, put on this yoke and like, yeah, yeah. and but also like, hey, go tell them this really not fun message, yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, if you don't figure this out, you're gonna die. Yep. Like, and, and so when you're being challenged, right, to do something that's hard, I mean, how do you know if this is God telling you to do something? Yeah. What do you think? I think the biggest thing for me, just as I've walked with the Lord over time, is as I am more consistently in God's word, consistently in prayer, consistently mm -hmm. involved in my relationship with him, it becomes easier for me to decipher what's from him and maybe what's a thought I just had. Yeah. Um, so I think at the end of the day, if we're in constant pursuit of him, mm -hmm. we're in constant listening to his voice, those promptings are going to be a little bit easier to decipher. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately, if it ever goes against what scripture says, what we know to be true in scripture, then it's obviously not from God. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, it's just like, as I continue to pursue him more, mm -hmm. sometimes I might be wrong. Yeah. That's fine. Right. But as I pursue him more, get used to hearing his voice more, mm -hmm. it's easier to decipher what's from him and what's not. It really is. It's, it's trying to make that voice as clear as possible, 100%. right? Making sure that like, man, that your, your line, your pathway to God, yep. right, is as unimpeded as possible too. And like, yeah, backing it up with scripture. I mean, yep. if, if you ever think that God is telling you to do something that is like not found in scripture, that yep. isn't biblically based, don't do it. It's not the Lord. <laughs> like, I had I had a pastor tell me one time, he's like, if you've come up with a new like theological idea or like something that's like no one's ever thought of ever, mm -hmm. it's probably wrong. Yeah, pro it's probably not it. <laughs> it's probably yeah. wrong. And I, I've always thought it was important too, like the, the role of affirmation. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we're like, there's other people that are here with us. Man, if like, I, I've had people come up to me and say, hey, God tell me to do this thing. Like I, I'm so certain of it. I'm so certain of it. And and like in my head, the, and they're like they're asking me to be a part of this thing and do this thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, sometimes it was in the case of like serving in a ministry where I knew that they weren't really going to be a fit or yeah, yeah, you know yeah. wanting to do something. Yeah, yeah. Like anyways, they they kind of come and do that. No, like trust me, this is God telling me to do this. And I'd be like, listen, if God really wanted you to do that, He'd be telling me the same thing. I'd be on, I'd be a lot more on board with you, right? Right. If it if it was just some affirmation, that, yeah, yeah. Like, it, but it's like making sure you're also getting that affirmation from holy people. You know, mm -hmm. you don't 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 ask your crackhead uncle. Like, <laughs> I don't know if we can say that, but like, nope. ask your crackhead uncle. Like, hey, I think the Lord's telling me to get a cat. What do you think? We shut it down. <laughs> we shut it down. We yeah, shut it down. Yeah, so not from the Lord. Yeah, and make sure you get your affirmation from the right people. You know, <laughs> in all seriousness. Uh, in all seriousness, right? In all seriousness, oh, uh, make sure you're getting your affirmation from the right people, mm -hmm. and then, and then, and ultimately, too. I mean, God. 
God put Jeremiah here in a tough spot. Yeah. You know, and God will put you in tough spots. Hundred percent. He's got. You know, uh, it's not like God's trying to ultimately like hurt you or harm you or anything mm-hmm. like that. But He's gonna challenge you. Oh yeah, He's gonna put you in some hard situations. Yeah. Making or asking you to have some hard conversations. I've noticed yeah. that just in leadership. Yeah. It's like you gotta have hard conversations all the time. Right. The more you push them off, right, they get worse. Yep. And worse. Yep. And worse. <laughs> yeah. So. Make sure you guys are figuring that out. I mean, I don't know. It's it's so hard to discern sometimes because yeah. sometimes it is the small things, right? Yeah. It, it's it's asking for God's guidance and directions on some of these small things, and uh, and just make sure your that voice is as clear as you can possibly make it. Mm-hmm. Now you're doing things, so you're taking steps, that so you're staying plugged in on the bi- uh, on yeah. the one you're reading and everything like that. Uh, how hard is it for you? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys in on Mike's life. Mike decided to get a flip phone <laughs> this last year, and he wears it on his belt. Just to be not today because I got yeah. I, on it. I gotta be <laughs> honest. Work. I got sweats on. Today. Yeah, it, it doesn't work with sweats. <laughs> I want to see you make it work. Just wear a well. I do have a flip phone though. It's this is it's real. Great. It's a real thing. It works. I try to text him long like things that require long replies. It's like so that he, yeah, so that he has to like T nine it back <laughs> to me. But you're so your Bible reading like you're like it's that on yes. your plan but yes. it's doable right 100 it's 100 percent. i enjoy it a lot more yeah i i've when i read i have to slow down yeah you know and i actually have to to if i don't understand something mm-hmm. or whatever i can go back it's not just oh i'm just farther down the listening if you i know. learn to read one day maybe i'll do that <laughs> yeah, we've been praying for that been for praying him. for me to oh, learn to read to struggle. Uh, man it's uh the new testament today too um here's it's, it was really brief really yep. really brief um but here's what i love about it paul being a massive leader in the church mm-hmm. right he the, he's the guy who's literally telling these churches what to do yeah um and like helping direct them for sure he said, hey, guys, pray for me. Yeah. Uh, like, man, uh, it just points out that no matter how big of a shot you think you are, yeah. right, no matter how much you think you got it together, man, have people praying for you. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I do kind of wonder, like, I know that there's people in my life that pray for me. For sure. Because uh, there's been people who have told me that they pray for me, right, that, that say, like, I love when somebody tells me, hey, I'm praying for you by mm-hmm. name, right? It's yeah, not yeah. just like, hey, I'm praying for all the church pastors. No, I'm praying for Kyler Barnes right now. Mm-hmm. There's people that have told me that before, and it's been massively impactful. But how do you kind of assure and make sure that you have people praying for you? It's mm-hmm. it's being open like Paul did. I think and it's saying, asking. And it's asking. Yep. Hey, man, be praying for me, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and Paul's prayer was so unselfish, too. He's asking, like, be praying for me. Be praying, though, that, like, God's fame and love mm-hmm. spreading. For sure all around to everybody like Mm -hmm. that this thing is moving on Mm -hmm. um and the importance of an unselfish prayer and here's the thing i liked about the very end of the reading it says and this is me paul in my own handwriting so that you know (laughs) that it's me (laughs) that it's actually me and i'm like does he write enough for people to actually know like oh it's a little squigglier this must be real (laughs) (laughs) Well, he pro- he had people helping. He him had people helping writing him. things down. Because he didn't know how to read either, like me. No, that's <laughs> you not and true. Paul. That's same. not true. Same <laughs> That's not true. Don't take that one home. Yeah, but but I just love. It. It's always like I love pointing out the funny little yeah, like, yeah, yeah. awkward For sure. like yeah. It's like just like the way he does his writing. Everywhere. And like in God's plan for us to have the Bible two thousand le- years later, right? We're we're looking at we're reading of like. We're allowed to laugh. We're allowed to laugh. That's allowed to be in there. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. does do, I don't know how much it does for my spiritual life. That <laughs> that particular verse probably did something for the original readers. Did something for the original readers. For me, readers. I'm like, I know it's Paul. I know it's Paul, but it brings it brings it all into good perspective <laughs> for it. us. So, hey, thanks for joining us today. Make sure you guys are staying caught up, whether you got a flip phone or not. Come you on. practicing that practicing that ping pong? Maybe you can challenge dude one of us. You work your way through Brian, then Mike, then myself. Come see me at Gold Creek Woodenville. Mm-hmm. I'll win. Most of the time. (laughs) Most of the time. All right. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you.